Here. The year was 1968. Let's look at the Columbia the University Vietnam uh, protests. War raged on. Liberal uprisings took hold in Czechoslovakia. The civil rights movement intensified. Across the globe, people cried out I for radical pee. change. In the U.S., these cries rang out across many college campuses as students pushed for civil rights and demanded an end to the Vietnam War and the draft. These sentiments translated into activism and demonstrations, many of which ended in violence. Such was the case at Columbia University in April 1968. In February 1968, Columbia University began construction on an $11.6 million gymnasium in Morningside Park, part of the Harlem neighborhood that houses Columbia's main campus in New York City. Almost immediately, there was objection. Students and activists argued the gym discriminated against Harlem residents by evicting and displacing them to build the structure. The gym would be built with a main entrance that catered to students and university affiliates. But local Harlem residents, many of whom were black, could use part of the facilities, but would have to enter through a back door in the basement. Many interpret this as segregation and racism. Among the gym's fiercest opponents was Columbia's Student Afro-American Society, founded in 1964. Members of the SAS labeled the construction project Jim Crow, and enlisted help from other black activists in the Harlem community and throughout New York. While the SAS worked to halt construction of the gym, another campus organization, Students for a Democratic Society, or the SDS, was building... It's really fucked up, man. Really fucked up, these students. ...building a case against the university's apparent involvement in the Vietnam War. In 1967, one SDS member, Bob Feldman, found documents in the school library showing ties between the university and a think tank involved in weapons research for the U.S. Department of Defense, known as the Institute for Defense Analyses, or IDA. Many saw this as the university directly supporting the war in Vietnam. In the spring of 1968, the SDS, led by then-chairman Mark Rudd, organized a rally against the university. Their rallying cry? Students would not attend a university that exploited black people and developed weapons designed to kill the Vietnamese. On April 23, 1968, several hundred Columbia students gathered in front of Lowe Memorial Library, the university's main administrative building. They attempted to take their message inside to University President Grayson L. Kirk, but the administration locked the building down so, the group marched to the gymnasium construction site and tore down part of the fencing that surrounded it. The police moved to disperse the crowd, arresting one student in the process. Then, protesters staged a sit-in at an administrative building, preventing Dean Henry Coleman from leaving his office. They presented a list of six demands. Two included stopping construction on the gym and severing ties with the IDA. The students promised not to leave until their demands were met. The students eventually released Dean Coleman the next day, but their numbers had grown upwards of 400. They had a hostage. They took over the low level. They took a fucking Dean hostage, bro. Come on. Come on. Like, the, the students now, the things that the students now are, uh, that are doing, uh, that are protesting against, like Israel are are so much kinder. They are so much. They are pacifists. Okay, in comparison to what these dudes were doing. Library and three additional buildings on campus. Students and community members sympathetic to the cause. Brought but the dean's different than a janitor, bro. That's bullshit. They didn't fucking keep a hot. They did not hold a janitor hostage. That was media propaganda, dude. Get the fuck out of here. Oh yeah, they held the janitor hostage and then. Yet, the janitor immediately left? How did that happen? Was the janitor uh, a... How did they hold the janitor hostage, number one? Number two, is he a, a master of kung fu? Did he actually fight his way out? Is that how he got out? The janitor was there for ten fucking minutes. You think that was being held hostage or being held back for a brief moment while they set up the fucking uh, uh, protections? Brought food and other supplies. 
The university tried to negotiate an end to the standoff over the next several days, but the administration refused to promise amnesty to the protesters, and no agreement was reached. Over the course of the week, the numbers of protesters grew, until finally on April 30th, police, acting on orders from school president Kirk, moved in and forcefully cleared all five buildings. Amid the chaos, more than 100 students, faculty members, and police were injured, and 712 students were arrested. Motivated by the actions of the police, that Yeah. The fucking thugs broke in and beat the shit out of and violently apprehended students on the same exact day, 56 years ago. Or 54? I don't know. I don't know math. I did the math last night on my Instagram story. I think it was 56 years ago. Same exact fucking day, 56 years ago, baby. April 30th, 1968. Thousands of Columbia students went on strike, and the campus shut down for the rest of the semester. The university's June commencement ceremony was held off campus instead of at its traditional location on Low Plaza. More than 300 graduating students walked out in protest to hold their own counter commencement ceremony. Eventually, Columbia University met the protesters' major demands. Gym construction was permanently suspended. What? Were the universities supporting the war financially then, like they are now? Yes, of course. Their involvement, the difference is that the involvement of American institutions of higher learning with genocidal state apparatuses has become increasingly more prominent over the years, is basically calcified. And it's not just that, it's like a multiple prong attack. What I mean by this is, like, you have, especially when it comes to Israel, you have a lot of donors who are just very openly like, if you don't fucking do this, if you, if you don't immediately pack up these students, like, I'm just going to not give you millions of dollars any longer. Robert Kraft openly stated, if you don't pack up these fucking kids, okay, in between getting rub and tugs at uh, massage parlors in Florida, Robert Kraft turned around and was like, Hold on, I'm jerking my shit off right now by uh, someone who was trafficked, but let me tell you something, okay? Once I'm done getting my shit jerked off, okay, I'm gonna fucking come at you real quick, Columbia, with some shit, okay? You better fucking destroy these students. Anyway, yeah, I'm getting my shit zerked off right now. Let me tell you something, okay? Get my shit zerked off. But when I'm done, when I nut, by the time I nut, I better fucking not see a single goddamn pro-Palestinian sentiment being expressed on college campus. That's what he was doing. Okay? <sighs> Didn't he almost go to prison for that? Yeah, dude. You think we fucking put billionaires in prison in this goddamn country? It's an entire nation de designed around specifically doing the opposite of that. Anyway... Um, the point is professor pinned on the ground, being arrested at UV Madison, asking for the police to leave the student alone. We're getting a taste of, tr uh, Trump's America if elected. It's just cognitive dissonance. I think that's why it's such a common thing for, for people to say, uh, about like socialism in action. You know what I mean? Like They'll just show you, like, obvious instances of capitalism fucking destroying people's lives and then point to it and be like, this is, this is what it would be like if socialism took root, took hold over America. It's like, bro, you're living in the situation. It is, we are so far fucking removed from socialism, big dog. Okay, Farley, calm down. Farley! Farley! God damn it. No, my dad just walked in and Farley's going nutty mode. Are you still voting for Biden? Bitch, when did I say I am? When did I say that?
I'll tell you who I'm not voting for, Donald Trump. Doesn't mean I'm voting for Biden. Hold on, before I forget. So I thought a good propaganda framing chat and it's not, let me know if I'm cooking. You can't protest genocide nowadays with how woke everyone is. That's <laughs> silly. Anyway. I thought Farley and your dad vibed yesterday. They did. But Farley's a bit of a fucking fair weather fan. You know what I mean? He forgets quickly. He has a short, he, he, he has a short memory. Little man. All right, let's finish this. And the school ended its relationship with the IDA. Columbia also began to revise long established and long criticized policies and formed a university senate. And after resisting numerous requests for his resignation, University President Kirk announced his retirement before the beginning of the next school year. In 1968, the Columbia protests were just one example of our nation grappling with injustices at home and abroad. And others caught on, validated by what many saw as legitimate and successful means of expressing grievances Demonstrations spread to hundreds of schools and cities around the world. Yep. Farley is uh, Caroline and Will's dog, yes, for those of you who don't know.